So good afternoon. This is Claudia Phyllis. I'm with the Center for Hellenic Studies in Washington, D.C. And today uh, we're hosting a visit from Lenny Milner, who is a professor of classical studies at Brandeis University. And we're being joined by Janet Oselak, who's a very important uh, and committed member of the Hour 25 community and Heroes X community. She was also a wonderful discussion facilitator in the second session of the project. And so um, Professor Milner visited Hour 25 today for a live chat, and he spoke with us about the Homeric Hymn to Aphrodite. So we were hoping we could follow up on that conversation a little bit. Jenna, I think you may have a question. Yes, uh, I was uh, wondering the name of uh, uh, Aphrodite's, Aphrodite's love interest here. Right, right. Um, his name uh, has uh, a lot to say in it. Uh, can you talk about it? Yes, yeah, so uh, I think I think what what really would help is if we if you if you we looked at and I hadn't I I should have done this ahead of time, the other passages where you have this word ankhitheos used um, of cert, of groups it's used of affiations, and it's also used of mortal men who attract the interest of goddesses. Okay, um, and and uh, so it means it means uh, um, it designates a certain group of people who are on the on the in a transitional space between divinity and mortality, and that's obviously where heroes are to a certain extent. Okay, so they're potentially heroes of epic and heroes of cult, both. Okay, I think there's a there's a sort of cosmic aspect to them, but also um, um, the the um, the thing that's really most interesting about Anchises himself is that. He's a, a lame person, okay? He's a lame father, and and uh, you may remember in the we, we talked about it in the in the chat room about how as soon as he realizes that he's made love to a goddess instead of a mortal, he's afraid that he's going to be uh, lame, and then he uses this word in Greek that no one else ever uses about the another thing that he's afraid of, which is biothalmios, and no one knows what it means, but it. It certainly has to do with the notion of him not biothalmia should mean flourishing in life and therefore not impotent. Okay, mm -hmm. but but uh, but I think the lameness is a uh, is in biblical contexts as well as here. Um, it's a metaphor for impotence. Okay, and I think it makes sense in the context of of uh, you know, there's a supercharged relationship between goddesses and mortals in the, these cases, and it's dangerous uh, in all sorts of ways. So, so, but the other thing is that he gets, it, it's clear that from the end of the hymn that he gets uh, thunderbolted because everyone knows the story about him being the father um, of Anchise, of Aeneas, rather, and, and of the two of them having sex, which he's warned against ever revealing. And um, and that's why he you know he he doesn't get lamed by her she 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 says uh, she describes this whole thing and says he'll get thunderbolted if he reveals anything but he can't walk um, in the in the post uh, in in the po in the iconography of him he's always a person who has to be carried and and um, so and he has no other children so I think that's what's going on there but I think what it means is that he survives being thunderbolted, which is also uh, an ambivalent thing, right? He, you know, the rest of us would be dead, <laughs> <laughs> right? But it's, it's, it symbolizes the fact that he's more than human, right? Um, right. In some very important way. So, so, uh, I, uh, but I think it, it's, it, that's Greg's etymology that it comes from these two words that mean that both mean radioactively close to being a god, okay? Esotheos, equal to a god, and Ankitheos. So you've got the two first parts of the compound combined into a person who's nearly equal. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And so as we get closer and closer, or these heroes get closer and closer to that state of being god, that becomes more and more dangerous. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it's dangerous in, in all these ways, and uh, cosmically dangerous, dangerous to affects. Okay, because I think I think for the gods, they they don't want to be too involved. There's always this problem about 
about being involved with with mortals because they die, mm -hmm. and um, and what happens to them and stuff like that. The epic is is very ambivalent uh, about gods who are you know it's like Zeus when he sends down that stuff whatever it is from the sky when Sarpedon has to die right. There's supposed to be this this distance between them, but then again there isn't, right? So it's a it's a big problem in lots of mythological traditions how to keep the gods and the humans separate, right? And and um, having uh, offspring between mortals and uh, immortals, they are also the agents between two worlds, right? Yes, exactly. They're sort of hostages to both worlds, right? And in a way, they they make sh they make it necessary that communication be, be continue to happen, right? And that people have stake in both of them. So, so Aeneas perpetuates that that okay, and and his name, you know, which which Aphrodite uh, explains in the hymn uh, has to do with the with the the, the Greek word Inos, which itself has complicated meanings and means something that's a riddle, right? But but it also means something terrible and, and grievous, right? So so it's supposed to reflect his uh, the the grief that it, it caused her that she had sex with a mortal man, and uh, which took her down from the position of superiority as a goddess who, with impunity, made all kinds of goddesses fall in love with with uh, with mortals and gods, right? Mm -hmm. So so she gets put in her place as being subservient to Zeus on the one hand, right? Because it's Zeus who does it to her. He usurps her function in, a, in an interesting way, right? Because he can do everything, <laughs> right? Lenny, thank you so much for helping us think about this today. Yeah, no, um, and I know you thought more about this and about the kind of anger that's involved when these boundaries get crossed. Like yep. You've talked yep. about that in a book called The Anger of Achilles. I yep. hope you'll come back to Hour 25 and talk about that in the future. Yeah, I, I hope so too. I'd be glad to. I know that uh, I see a lot of people have mentioned it and uh, and, uh, and have questions about it, and it's uh, it's a fun topic for me, especially. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much today. Thank you, thank you, Janet. Thank was, you so much. It was good to see you, Janet, and uh, and thank you for everything you've done. It's it's wonderful to have a moment with you both, as thank always. You. Okay. Take care. Yeah.